Hey everyone, welcome to episode 27 of our podcast here. In today's episode, we have Max Bauer, who lives in Germany, and Patrick, who lives in Texas in the United States. I'm Dr. Ben Thompson, and we're going to talk about Lanier, the tinnitus treatment device, and Patrick's journey to Europe to meet Max. Let's each introduce ourselves, give us a quick explanation of who you are, where you live, and what you do. Max, would you like to go first? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Ben, what an honor. <laughs> so my name is Maximilian Bauer. I'm 41 years old and live close to Munich, Germany. We have our practice in the south of Munich. And I have two kids. <laughs> and I am a hearing care professional. It's a different uh, education system over here in Germany. I'm not officially an audiologist, but I don't know. It's there is since I apply for a, a sailors university in America, so they don't know what we are. So <laughs> some kind of a hearing care professional. <laughs> and I suffer from tinnitus since I'm 12 years old, so myself. I wouldn't say now I suffer, but I, I got it when a friend took his toy gun and st stuck it into my ear and he pulled the trigger. And I have this noise trauma since back then. And so I know how everybody feels with uh, tinnitus and I try to fight it. My main job, of course, is fitting hearing aids, but uh, like a uh, I would say since Linear, we we started focusing more like on tinnitus. Therefore, before we had Linear, we had like, of course, we had the hearing aids for patients all that have the combination of he uh, hearing loss and tinnitus, and we had the noises. So we, we don't work with a CBT or anything like that. We do just the technical stuff. Thank you so much, Max. How about Patrick? So I, I'm Patrick Lacey. I live in Dallas, Texas. I'm married. I have two kids. Both are grown and working, and one's in California, out by, not near Ben, but, but in LA. And I'm an attorney. I got tinnitus in April of 2020 and didn't see Ben for a year, I think, April of 2021. That's when I started the program. And Patrick, tell us about your experience. You first worked with tinnitus retraining therapy, and then eventually you were also curious about the linear product that has tongue stimulation as well as auditory stimulation for the training program. That's how all of us got connected. Would love to hear your journey. Would you be able to share that for us? Sure. Yeah, so just as part of my exercise program as I have a spin bike at home and with COVID and everything and with the uh, uh, gyms getting kind of closed down. So I'm, I've kind of become a professional YouTuber, I think, because I, you know, I don't have anything to do other than watch YouTube on the spin bike. So that's literally how I found you just kind of researching tinnitus. I found Dr. Ben and then you know, enrolled in your program in April. My tinnitus, I guess it initially started out where I had hearing aids fitted in April of 2020, and that pretty much knocked it down pretty well. And But it, then it progressively kind of got worse, and it got worse and worse. And then about the time I contacted you, I was in a pretty dark spot and then was ready for, you know, kind of anything. So the sound therapy program was implemented, I think, in April of 2020, and I was in a bad spot. I didn't really believe it. I was kind of like, ah, this isn't going to work. But April 2021, it. correct? Yeah, April 2021. So started that, and then I think, you know, just fishing around again on YouTube, I, I saw the Lanier program on a YouTube video. I think there was like two of them, and just it said that, that it's not available in the U.S., but it is available in Germany and Ireland. And I just kind of, that, that was probably in May. And I just kind of, you know, well, it's not here. So I just disregarded it. And then around that time, my wife and I were talking about celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary. And we had dinner with my son-in-law and we we're just talking about Europe. And he was saying my favorite place of anywhere in Europe. And he spent, you know, like a summer in Europe was Munich. He said, that's, that's the best place I've ever been. And we were like, well, Maybe we should go to Munich for our 30th. So started kind of putting that together. And then I thought, well, I think they have that Lanier program over there. So we formalized the trip. We were going to be basically in Frankfurt, Munich, and Nuremberg. And so I just kind of went on the Lanier dot com and found out where they had programs, not knowing really anybody. And I emailed each guy in Frankfurt, Munich, and Nuremberg, and they all emailed back and said something. And I settled on the Munich one because it kind of worked out on our time. And I didn't realize that that was when he emailed me back, he said, Max, at the bottom. Then I, I go, 
I think that's the YouTube video I saw was the video of Max about the linear program. And so I didn't put that together till I went back and I watched the video and I was like, oh, that's that's the original guy I saw back in May that talked about it. So I, I set up an appointment and just I think it was the first day we got into Munich and, and flew over there and had an 11 o'clock meeting with Max and nicest guy in the world. We had a great conversation. Max even took us to lunch, which uh, I've never had a doctor do that for me before. So got fitted with the, the Lanier and then had the, you know, the device kind of the rest of the trip. And I've, I think it's been three weeks so far, maybe a little bit more than that. And just real quick, between April and July, August, had you seen improvement with tinnitus retraining? And then if so, has that changed since Lanier for you so far? Yeah. So yes, I, I had quite a bit of an improvement with the sound therapy and had sessions with Ben and, and was saying that, you know, the sound therapy, the way I've always kind of gauged it is, is how much I had to dial up the, the volume of the sound therapy and how much I could dial it down. And kind of when it was bad, I had to put it all the way over and I could still hear my tinnitus. It was, it was still frustrating. So yeah, from May to, to August, it had gotten where the sound therapy i think was working and i i kept you know lowering the volume or, or felt like i could without hearing the loud tinnitus so so one of the things max told me was is that when i start the linear that it could spike the tinnitus and and he said that's actually a good thing if it does that so i i feel like the first two weeks that that did happen that that it got a little bit spike more than probably usual this last weekend was probably the first weekend where it actually got lower than it did before the linear or before the the sound therapy where i, I did kind of feel like it was different but probably the first two weeks it was spiked up and so it was you know some days louder than normal and i you know have no idea Okay, Why? thank but you. Max said that was good. Thank you. I would love to pass it over to Max. And I also want to share that we're not recommending every person in the United States go to Europe to get the linear device. Definitely not. We're also not recommending the linear device for every single person with tinnitus. But we want to share this story and try to mm -hmm. put educational information out. Max, please share some of your perspectives with working with linear and seeing Patrick and what you've seen using this device so far. Sure, absolutely. Um, first of all, I have to like set a disclaimer, I would say, because I'm not 100% neutral because uh, we make a living out of hearing aids and uh, um, linear, and, but I try to be as best as I can. So the question is about the, this, what do you know about the spiking or should I start? Where should I? Where do you want me to Let's start? Start overall. How do you communicate linear as a treatment option for your patients who come to your clinic? So what I communicate is that it should not be the last straw. So I don't want to be the person. I ask if it does not work, what would you do? Or uh, what's your game plan? Because being the last hope or the final hope or the last straw is very putting a lot of pressure on me and uh, and working with uh, linear but everybody who's coming to us <laughs> saw at least i would say 10 doctors or 20 one lady from san francisco she already she said i'm the 51st the 50 yeah the 51st uh, hearing pro professional that uh, she's seeing now so <laughs> They tried everything when they found linear, because I think you have to do, you really have to do your research before you find linear because it's, there's no advertising for it. Like just maybe I was, I think it was my video uh, was the first one that you could find anywhere. Yes. Thank you. And, and what have you seen so far? Like most tinnitus treatments, I imagine yeah. some people are getting better. Yeah. Some people have no change. Mm -hmm. Few people are getting worse, if any. And mm -hmm. Also, we know sometimes there is a natural habituation, a natural improvement for patients, especially who have had tinnitus for less than two years. What are you seeing in the clinic, Max? Okay. Um, so as far as I know, like the results with CPT are, are quite good. And this is what I recommended before we started with Lanier. And I think that the chance of having a, re a relief 
is like like 80 percent or so I, I there are no real studies but as far i don't know them if there are some but i i think as far as i could research it it's about 80 percent and this is what linear also says the thing is when we have patients coming into our practice they say i don't want to train i don't want to listen to something different i don't want to focus and i just take it away from me okay i beg you take it away <laughs> And this is, of course, very hard. And then when I found Lanier, it, it's like what we searched, what we, what we were searching for. So Lanier contacted us after they saw an article in a news magazine from me, and they showed me their, stu their studies. And I said, wow, this is amazing. This is almost unbelievable. 86% of the people, the individuals who attended the studies felt a relief. You have to see is that it's not 86% who got rid of their tinnitus. Oh, I think Patrick is not with us. Okay. It's like what the studies shows is that it's 14 points of the THI score that goes down. Not the tinnitus vanish. It does not vanish uh, in the study. And so, and I said, well, okay, let's give it a try. So the first patients came in and we had a little difficulty with the technical, so with the, with the device itself. So it just stops or the one side gets louder, gets louder of, uh, as the other side. And there, there was a lot of issues with the technique. And I always was in contact with uh, Neuromood and I said, so there's, we have problems. That's, that's not what, what we want to uh, provide to our patients. You have to fix it. And they said, Max, you are the only one complaining. <laughs> and I said, so I, as I know we have 10 patients and eight of them had problems. And you say, I'm the only one who's complaining. And then they did the research and the research and the research. And then they checked the controllers and so on. And they said, yeah, Max, you were right. <laughs> There is a problem. So they invented a new software. And since that, we never had this technical problems again. So this, uh, in the beginning, we had this like a rocky, rocky road. So since uh, everything is like bug free, we could start, really start treating our our clients. And I would say what Patrick described and what I told him, the spiking in the big beginning is not very unusual. Like Neuron would say, it's about 10% of the patients who feel this uh, spike in the be beginning. And I would say it's more than 10%. But when it spikes, it doesn't spike because of the, the volume of the, the auditory signal. If every tinnitus would spike if you uh, like put a lot of like uh, noise on it. Um, it spikes because your auditory, yeah, central auditory system responds to it, to the combination of the, the electric signal and the auditory signal. And like pa Patrick describes, it should go in after one or two weeks, it should, then you should feel the start uh, of the relief. Yeah, and that's what we saw exactly, yes. And I would say we have a success rate of not 86%, but round about 50%. Okay. Um, what I don't know, what we are still trying to figure out and what Neuromood also is trying to figure out what kind of tinnitus groups like the, the noise trauma or autotoxic uh, medicine or like, how do you call this, som somatosensoric? somatosensory yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. as as well as i imagine acute cases in the first six months versus chronic cases one year five years ten yeah, years yeah. It, it should be chronic but when it's still coupled to the cause you can treat it like you want like when there is an inflammation in your mouth like on a on a tooth or so you will you cannot treat it with a linear this says everything has to be fixed and then when it's still there you should start treating it maybe with linear or something else i wouldn't recommend linear to everybody you have to be like mentally stable so because otherwise you have to we have to we so i'm not a psychologist i do not have background of a psychologist we need to work with uh, a psychologist, and at, at least in addition. I don't want anybody left alone with a technical device when you really, really have uh, mental issues. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Patrick, let's bring it to you. When you were considering this, what were your expectations? Was it a guarantee? Was it maybe it will help? Was it probably won't help? What were you expecting going into? Well, I think most of all, I was impressed with the study. The information is available online. I mean, you, if you're, you know, and I'm a lawyer, so maybe I read things that other people wouldn't, but they're, they're, you can actually pull the studies, the medical studies, and, and read the three groups that were tested and how they were tested and which ones, you know, what the results are. So, I mean, I read all that. I, and so I was I was pretty optimistic because it had 
you know, found something scientific that I don't understand. It was like, it'd be like if you, if you told me to, you know, pat my head and rub my stomach in a circle, then, you know, and, and your tinnitus will go away. And we have a scientific study that proves it. Well, you know, I'm going to do it. So I was optimistic that the results were pretty fantastic. I think there was 500 or 326 in the study. And it was like Max said, it was at 86 percent said there was dramatic improvement. I think even a smaller percentage, small percentage that it went away. So, you know, I was optimistic, but I was also had some, you know, some belief that, okay, well, you know, if it, if it doesn't work, it's not going to kill me. So I was willing to try the sound therapy and help me, but I still had, you know, the annoyance. So it had gotten to the point where I could live with it, but I'm, you know, I guess I'm the kind of guys like, well, let's, let's see if we can do better and give it a try. Absolutely. Thank you. And there was a great article put out by Tinnitus Hub that looked into Neuromod and the linear effectiveness of the study. And, you know, they said that, you know, overall 80% Neuromod from their 10A1 study said that 81% of patients, of participants showed any improvement after the 12-week program. Now, that's not so significant because with most treatments, someone would expect any improvement. I mean, even slight improvement. There was some, some questions from Tinnitus Hub, which were very accurate and very worth mentioning of what is the long-term effectiveness recorded with the TFI score and also mentioning the independent scientific research that Neuromod did with the 10A1 study, and they did show some long-term effects that held. I studied with Paul Jasterbaugh, founder of TRT, and one of the very important things he described was when you look at this scientific data, make sure you look at six months after treatment, 12 months after treatment, make sure the results are holding and lasting. And even though this is early, and I certainly don't have all the answers, I'm still waiting for more data and information to come in, but it seems promising and it seems like something that we want to educate everyone who's listening on so that we know the pros and cons and that you hear the information from trusted sources instead of just marketing or advertising material. Max, I'll pass it to you. What do you see the future looking like? At what point do we know that this really works for a lot of people? And at what point do we say, hmm, maybe this won't work and we should stop using it? How do you approach that moving forward? Well, that's a very good question. So we will continue to uh, treat our patients, but we will consider to find out who's worth uh, working with. Not like you know wh where we think we can we can really give him a relief or her. So at, so what we found out, for example, is when you have a tinnitus that's bothering you longer than ten years or so, it's really really hard to treat it with uh, linear. So we will cut this out. And what I would say is whether we find out whether we can treat no noise traumas with it. I would say the most promising a group of people who are suffering from tin tinnitus is like when you have this like, like tension or tight muscles and so on, like when you had an, a car accident or so. So I think this is it will work good for them. Like with uh, like when you did, did uh, took some toxic pills or so. I don't think it will really really work for them. But we will we are going to find this out. And when we have like I think we had now forty patients or so that we treated with linear. And maybe when we have 100 pers uh, persons or patients and we think, okay, there were only, like I would say, like 40 or, or 45 or so that really had a success story. And so there are at least 45 then, but I, it's half of them what Linear said, uh, what Neuromood says. I would be a little bit disappointed. But since I want to find out what's the best group, I, was, I think we have more like a higher success rate. So we will sell less of the uh, of linear, but more like aiming towards is there really will there be really be a, a success? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's I know a what hard you mean. one for me. Okay. I know what you mean. I think that's a that's a good approach. I yeah, think that's yeah, a yeah. good approach because yeah. us as clinicians have to work with the manufacturer and the scientists who created the product, as well as we have to work with the patients who want to try anything. Yeah, yeah. And like you're saying, we have to be it's responsible. It's a lot of money. So we want to give them a, a relief for, us for 2,700 euros. So it's a lot of money. If it works, it's priceless. But it, if it doesn't work, it was a, a lot of money. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's continue the conversation and let's keep developing our understanding 
of those subgroups and what we see works. I think that will be excellent for us to share and collaborate on. Patrick, do you have any last words for us? Hopefully we can track your progress at a future podcast episode where you can share your long-term benefits from TRT with Lanier and how that goes for you. Do you have any last words, Patrick? No, I, I, I'm still very early on in it. The, the only comment I guess I have for someone thinking about it is that probably the hardest part is just finding another hour in the day because it's uh, it's 30 minutes and 30 and so you it's it's just you know that you've incorporated meditation maybe as part of your your program well that that took a little bit of time so now so it's but it's you know it's like well I've got to do that because that's what it's that's what it's going to require I mean that's just I didn't, I didn't ask for this tinnitus but I'm I'm hoping to to deal with it you know struggle to find that 30 extra 30 minutes each twice a day but you know i'm gonna do it thank you so much patrick max any final words here thank you for inviting me i really feel honored and yeah <laughs> i don't have other final words <laughs> sorry would love to would love to have you on again as a guest and you and i as well as other professionals who want to be involved we should be collecting our own data our own information trying to find the subgroups that the tinnitus treatments work well for, whether that is tinnitus retraining therapy, whether that is hearing aids, whether that is linear, whether that is CBT. So let's continue the professional collaboration from Europe to United States. Mm -hmm. Thank you everyone for listening and make sure to check out our other episodes of the podcast to hear other professionals and learn more about different therapies and treatment options. Thank you guys, goodbye.